Welcome everybody at Choir of the Earth. Today, Ben and I are deeply honoured, deeply honoured to have uh, Martine Palmieri, who composed not only the wonderful Lacrimosa that we're singing at the moment, which we'll discuss shortly, but also the wonderful Missa Tango, for which we have to thank Ulla Mercer very much for introducing us to this music. Thank you, Ulla. Um, and it is the most remarkable piece, Martin, that that, that you composed. How, lo how long ago was it that you actually composed Missa Tango? Hello, Mark. Hello, Ben. Uh, well, this piece was written um, 26 years ago, but it starts, it starts to be very well known maybe six or seven years later. Uh, because, well, in, in the beginning, I, I didn't believe that uh, it's, a, it's a good piece of music <laughs> because the combination, <laughs> the combination of Latin and tango uh, is a little bit strange. No? But I have to say that the idea of the, the Misa Tango was, was a, a little bit an accident also because um, at the same time, I was the conductor of the, uh, the Coral of the University of Buenos Aires, the School of Law. Uh, and at the same time, I was studying the, the tango with the Maestro Rodolfo Mederos, and I have my own orchestra, La Vidu Tango, that we, we made, uh, we, we did a, a lot of uh, concerts in Buenos Aires. But of course, the, the people of the choir is coming to, to hear the, the tango orchestra, and in a moment, the, the, the commission of the choir asked me to do something together with the or tango orchestra and the choir. But I, I think for myself, what can we sing? Because it's not music written for choir and tango orchestra, because there is not connected. It's, 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 there are like two different worlds, that two different universes, and no bridges between. So uh, the, the only way that I, that I can imagine is uh, to, to do our, our traditional tangos with the orchestra, with the choir, in simple arrangements of four voices, but not too much counterpoint, just the, the tango, look, looking for the phrase, you know, of, of the music, not, not the complex, no. And we, I prepared the arrangements, we made a concert in the university with the first part of the, 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 the choral a cappella, then the orchestra plays some tangos, and at the end, the big show of the tangos with orchestra. And really, it was a disaster, it was very, <laughs> not very, not very good, but not very good because of the quality of the music that was okay, the arrangements are okay, everything is okay, but... Well Martin, I, you, know, you know that the history is littered with uh, first performances that go badly, like uh, Puccini, Madame Butterfly, and and everything. You know, so you're in very good company. So many of Beethoven's <laughs> first performances were a disaster. So uh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. But uh, the question is that uh, when you play the melody of a tango, the, the the tango is a vocal music because it's plenty of of singers. And the most famous tangos are with the lyrics and, and, and music. No? But the problem is that when you uh, uh, made an arrangement and 15 tenors, 15 sopranos have to play a melody that is based in the improvisation, of not the notes, but the rhythm and the diction of the text and the, and the declamation of the text is basically this. When you put this in, in a choir, something is lost in the, on the way. Why? Because this spontaneity is lost. You have to, to fix a, a way to sing and repeat all the time the same, because if not, it's not possible to sing together, obviously. So, uh, when I understand that this is not possible to recreate this, this kind of singing, it's not possible to recreate with, with a choir, I'd say, this is a, a deadline uh, uh, way is 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 no 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 it's not it's, it's not an artistic way it's just for fun and just to say i am singing a tango and nothing more so i say i decide to finish with this but the choir and also the pool the public because they like they say, but it's, it's it's good for the public and you and you are singing tango and with the orchestra it's something special and they say but no and, and the orchestra don't like too much i have to say <laughs> uh, yeah, and and then one of the bases I remember he said, "Ah, you are a composer. Compose something new, original for tango and 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 and, and choir." That's that that was a little bit surprise for me, but I because I I never think thought uh, think about it. 
um, and uh, but and I can imagine that it's the same problem with, with that, like that we have with the tango. But I come back home and we are preparing one of the masses of Mozart, and I have all the all the text in my in my head, and I try to 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 test if it is possible to to do in Latin. I I have to say that I I went directly to to the to the Latin. I never uh, never uh, imagined this in Spanish. Spanish. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just I think because as a choir conductor. I, all the car wonders, we are very familiar with Latin, so it's, it's not a strange language for us. And and I think uh, I, because I was conducting and rehearsing the the the, the, tank, the, the Mozart mass, I, I am plenty on my head with with the, with the text. And I start with the Kyrie, and in the music comes immediately. It's not it's not traumatic to 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 to, to compose this. Uh, and well. Uh, I, I decided to finish at least the, the Kyrie, and I went to the rehearsal at the end of 1995. Eh? Uh, and I started to, to, to practice with the, with the choir, and the choir immediately likes it. Likes. So they said, well, okay, could be possible, maybe. And uh, in, at, at the same time, in the, in the same time, um, comes to my house uh, Fernando Alvarez, that is a, a very famous conductor in, in Argentina and in Spain and he heard the, the, in the computer the the Kyrie he say I have to, I have to conduct the symphonic orchestra of Cuba uh, next year I mean 1996 if you finish this piece we will do it wow wow this, <laughs> the symphonic orchestra of Cuba that is coming to Buenos Aires and it's important important item because it's the first time that the Cuban orchestra is going uh, out of the country for a long, long time and comes to Buenos Aires, to Santiago de Chile, and to Lima in Peru. That's so, amazing. It's an amazing story, uh, Martin. And how how quickly? I mean, uh, well, once you finish the piece and 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 uh, you know you have a, a recording and it begins to get known, does it? Have you found it takes many years for it to? I mean, has it? Has Mr. Tango now reached the stage where it has become part of the repertoire, do you think? Or do we still Take have time. some work to do? Took, took time to do this. Eh? It was not immediately. Fortunately, after the world premiere with the Symphonic Orchestra of Cuba in Buenos Aires, in 1997, we have the chance with the same conductor, Fernando Alvarez, that made a lot of recordings in Latvia, in Liepaja, in, 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 the, in the Baltic. Uh, and we could uh, uh, record the Misa Tango in a very good, uh, with a very good choir of, of Latvia and the orchestra, and and four, uh, three bandonions because the original the original Misa Tango is with four bandonions because the the, the normal the regular uh, typical orchestra of tango is with 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 a, a section of bandonions. Now it's reduced to one because it's too difficult to find. For bandones, obviously, uh, but the with, the with the with the recording, we made the recording. I by myself made thousand copies to start to to give to different conductors, and one day arrives to a bandonist in Freiburg in Germany, and he brought me a, a mail asking me if it is possible to get them the, the orchestral material. Yes, I have everything. He 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 is come, coming to Buenos Aires, so I receive him. In uh, at home, Wolfgang Benninger. Now it's like a brother for me. <laughs> uh, we started a very good uh, um, uh, friendship, and uh, he, I, I gave the the material, and he planned a, a concert in I think it was 2004, 2004 in Freiburg. That was the first time, because the first time in Latvia is only recording, was not a concert. So it was the first time in in Europe in 2004. And the, the question is uh, immediately they 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 played played this this concert. Many people around Freiburg and and in, in close to Basel in Switzerland goes to the went to the to the concert and and say to the conductors, oh, I discovered this piece. We, we can and and in one year is around around Freiburg more or less 15, 15, 15 concerts of Mr. Tango. Fantastic. 
So the, the, uh, I, I, I always remark that the, the, the publicity of this work, the work was by the choristers themselves. Yep. They are saying mouth to ear. <laughs> they, no, no, they, they want to say well, this. I'm very proud of this. Martin, I tell you, we have people in Choir of the Earth who are putting Mr. Tango on, on in their in the local choirs. Um, uh, so that you're right, word of mouth is absolutely. Uh, and have you any idea how many concerts there might be in one year now of Mr. Tango? Ten, a hundred around the world? Uh, this year only? Yeah. Uh, well, this year I, 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 I put in, in Facebook yesterday a version in Norway, a version in, in Serbia with a, with a um, accordion orchestra. It's about 30 accordions. Wow, and it, it's incredible. You, you have to look it because you can imagine that it's a very bright, uh, bright, shiny sound, but not. Yes. It's, 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 it, for, for a moment, you think that it's uh, really a strings. It's mm -hmm. incredible the amount of, of, of course, the soloist is abandonium. The soloist is abandonium, but you have the accordions and the abandonium, and then the choir in, in Serbia. This is in Serbia. Right. And what well, was played, I, I don't know, but I think uh, it's uh, more than 2,000 representations in, in the, from the beginning, you know, in, the, in these 20 years of, of life. So, so, Martin, how did you end up working with Saul uh, so closely with the Mesa Tango? The Mesa Tango, Saul, um, I connect with uh, Saul, I think, uh, 10 years ago. He he brought me a mail because he heard the Mesa Tango and and he started to plan something. And the first time that we meet him was in New York, I think. Uh, yes, in New York, in, in the Carnegie Hall. We, we played the Mr. Tango in the Carnegie Hall. And then he, will, he was invited to, to conduct the next. And he came with, with the, the Danish choir. And after this, I went to do, to do three concerts in, 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 in Denmark uh, with, with him. But Jan was, I, I, I told him that my grandfather was Danish, is Peter Bjorn Torben Tyson, and, and I, uh, this is, this, that was a good, a good story for, for the Danish people that mm. the composer is a descendant of, of somebody of the, of the yes, land. Yes, yes, yes. Now um, you mentioned you were working on a Mozart mass um, during the, the, I suppose, the main idea, the spark of inspiration for mm -hmm. Mr. Tango. And we will talk about your Lacrimosa in a minute, but I did think when I first heard Mr. Tango, I, I felt that this was a piece that Mozart would recognize mm -hmm. in terms of the way you approached it. I mean, what would you say were your biggest influences from the great Mozart into Mr. Tango? Well, um, um, some cadences, Judicare, Vivos et Mortos, uh, uh, in, the, in this part there are accord, the accords that I don't know why, but in the, the, the question is, I didn't select this, I want to use this. It's just coming when I am composing the music and with the, with the, the Mozart piece in my ear, it's, it's like coming naturally. I don't. I, I can explain this. Uh, it's just happened, and if, if for me it's good, I hmm. I put it. You have also a little bit of Gershwin in in the yes. solo yeah. piano, the piano, and, and, yeah, in the in the piano part. And, and when I was composing the, this, I uh, well, I have this chord because in 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 the in the theme is that uh, that's that chord. And when I play the piano, sounds a lot of Gershwin in this. And I say, no, this is not possible to put this because it's practically it's some passage of, 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 of Gershwin. But at the end, I, I remember that Piazzolla started to play Gershwin before play, play tango, practically. Mm. He, to, to make the audition to go into the, the, the Aníbal Troilo, one of the biggest orchestras in Buenos Aires, he played the Rhapsody in Blue. To, to go inside the tango orchestra he played. <laughs> wow. 
And uh, and Troy Law looks that he's very good player. I say I will teach you to 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 play, to play tango. So I think it's a kind of homage. I think all the Misa Tango is an homage of, of different of of, of the, the because I I I have to say that the structure of the of the, the mass is a is a traditional structure. I am not uh, trying to 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 crush the, the 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 structure of the of the Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn, Mozart. Uh, to, 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 um, uh, the, the, I don't want to to destroy the structure. I, no. I say uh, I am keeping the structure. I am keeping a lot of symbols. For example, for example, credo in unum deum pod all the time the same note is this. But I believe and I don't want to change. No, so these these kinds of things. Or for example, the shendi the celli, the shendi the celli. I, I am doing a, a down scale. This I don't want to to destroy this, but the bricks are from the tango, from Buenos Aires, from Latin America. The structure is not new, but the, the bricks are new. The, the the content, the 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 flavor, no. And I think that that's that's a little bit part of the success of this. And of course, that is Britain thinking in uh, create singable melodies, no. I think that might be why. As you say, the success of Mr. Tango has been the excitement that singers have when they sing it and they want to tell other singers about it, that that word of mouth that we were saying. Um, I, I think singers get to sing a lot of music that after a while is just the same thing over and over and over again. And to have something, as you say, is is in that style, but with new bricks. I think is uh, is really is really exciting for them. And yeah. I think that brings us to to the last Sorry, is... oh did it did it cut out i was just saying yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a... The, the last part i didn't hear so i think it's because it's uh it's in the traditional style but with new bricks i think that's why singers find it yeah. so exciting because it's not the same thing yeah, yeah. which i think brings us to your uh your latest piece in latin with tango influence which is of course Mozart's Lacrimosa that you finished for us and um, I know that Mark approached a number of composers to do this and most of them turned him down because they were if I'm honest Mark am I right in thinking they were too scared well I think they were, <laughs> worried. They, were they were worried Martin they were worried that they could not improve on perfection yeah 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 but but I have to, to tell you that uh, when you proposed me this I think, well, it's five minutes is possible to do because I am very busy. But, but I, 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 for me, it was a good challenge, and I want to, I want to try. Uh, but I have to say that I, I start three times from the beginning <laughs> because I'm not satisfied with the result. And at the end, at the end, with the third version, I think, well, this, this is, could be good, could be good. But it was, it was not simple to, to, to do this. I think maybe because you have the weight of Mozart, Lagrimosa, in your, in your back to, to, to compose this, and it's a big responsibility to, to, to don't disappoint the, <laughs> the singers. And I don't, but I, practically, I don't remember now how is the Lacrimosa because I, 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 we made the recording and I forgot the, 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 the music. But I think it's, it was, was I, I, I was satisfied with, with the result. I think, I think it's, it's, a, it's a piece. But we that... love it, Martin. We absolutely love it, don't we, Ben? Okay. We really do. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those, Mark uh, has this wonderful way of looking at music which is when you listen to a piece if it doesn't immediately grab you you need to listen to it 10 times okay because the first time you you don't you don't know where it's going it's it's like a new town you 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 don't have any landmarks and mm. after the first two or three time, times through you start to understand where it's going and by the 10th time you have you've explored every corner you you've heard every note and uh, okay. by that time you'll love it and when people heard it a lot of people particularly those who sang on mr tango instantly got it and went i love this and okay. a few people said i think i need to listen to it a few more times because they'd never heard anything like it they didn't sing on mr tango for example and as i was going through of course teaching each note line by line and i was pointing out you know some little features and little interesting moments and 
Um, and particularly, I have to say, the altos in the choir want me to thank you for uh -huh. writing a line that is not just one note. <laughs> it's that staying on a G all the way through. You wrote, you write really, really engaging and really dance-like lines, which I think makes sense for the tango. Um, so no, the choir absolutely love it, and it? they are going to be starting to record it this week. And mm. as soon as we have a, a, a rough version, I'd like to invite you to come and listen and help us mix it so that we get a, a nice balance. And then we are so excited to premiere it. Well, this this is a good feedback, Ben, because um, uh, when when you are composing the music, I test well. One one important thing for 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 the composers, I think, if if you are composing choral music, is the experience of to teach the lines to the choir, mm. and you learn a lot of composition when you teach the line because you you can uh, catch the reaction of people singing a singable melody or not, or chromatism or very difficult, and how the people suffer or enjoy Im immediately the, the the melody, and and because. In the beginning, not now because I, I, I arrive and the, the music is already learned. But when I, I have the chance to, to teach to my choir, this is the the most difficult test for for the composer to teach the lines that you brought at home and then in in the laboratory and then you have to give life with the real people. And this uh, uh, I I always say to to my pupils and and, and, and choir conductors and composers uh, that. Uh, the, the this reaction uh, that produced the, the to teach the music is uh, you have a lot of things to learn in in this in this uh, in this question and uh, well your feedback is talking about this the melodies and of course uh, i i try to do a uh, uh, good balance between all the voices it's not only the soprano singing the beautiful melodies but all the all the lines yes i i take care a lot of this yeah yeah, of course. That, 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 I, I think it's part of the success of what that, part of the success of, of the piece is that everybody's happy singing. No? Yeah. No, that really comes across. As I was teaching it to the choir, I I said on several occasions, I bet that Martin is a composer who always sings his lines before he publishes. <laughs> That's true. That's Some true. composers <laughs> clearly don't. Uh, you I know, taste. I taste with me yeah. like a, a, a simple chorister. <laughs> Yeah, no, and, I, and really, I teach to me the line first. <laughs> it's as if you learn pieces by Poulenc, for example, you know, beautiful music, but I, I doubt he ever sang a note in his life because the yeah. lines are really hard. Whereas <laughs> your lines are really engaging and interesting and they weave beautifully together. Um, so you, you said you started the piece three times and you felt the weight of Mozart. I think that mm -hmm. is. No, that completely understandable but how did it feel because obviously you wrote mr tango you know decades ago and is this the first time since then that you've returned to writing tango and latin choral music no 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 i i brought um i brought a magnificat also i brought a creation i brought the big mr tango the grand le grand mr tango that is, a, is a, a, a credo of 40 minutes, a glory of 40 minutes. Oh. Uh, it's two hours long, but not, not, don't worry, it's not to play in one concert. You can choose, uh, you can select what part you like. Uh, or for example, the Gloria or Credo, that are 40 minutes each one. You can, you can, it's half of the problem, uh, program, half yeah. of a program. Wow. And uh, I, I brought also a Christmas Oratorio. Um, uh, um, Nisi Dominus is a piece that was um, was uh, the Carlos Verlag commissioned me to to the 50th anniversary, and uh, well, more more I don't remember now. Uh, yes, another another piece for I I brought a lot of pieces here in Switzerland for for the anniversary of the choirs. For example, the creation was a commission here in Switzerland. Another another piece uh, for in Geneva two years ago. And um, yes, I have I have a lot of it's not only Mr. Tango, it's yeah. not but everybody's talking about Mr. Tango, but the Magnifica is the second piece that I brought. I brought for the national choir in, in Argentina. I think it's the like Misa Tango with but with more complex harmonies and, and things. You 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 can see this in YouTube. 
uh, with a Polish recording. And for me, it's, this is the, my, 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 my best work, the, the Magnificat. Magnificat. Uh, well, let's put it on the list, Mark. We will. We will. Tell Sal it's mine, not his. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I think so, Martin, you listens, are. I think, Ben, 10 listens coming up. Oh, I think so. I think so. You are the, the man. You are the, I think you are the only composer in the world. Um, you've established this new style. That, that must feel amazing. Uh, you know, the, the, the music in Buenos Aires, uh, the tango, the, the popular music and the classical music are divided. I, it's a big problem, I think, in all Latin America, not only in Argentina, and sometimes happen here in Europe also. Yeah. The, the, you, in Argentina, you have the popular music conservatoire and the classical music conservatoire. Mm -hmm. Now, but I am t I'm talking about 10 years ago, you, have, you, you can study the bandoneon in the classical music uh, because before it's not possible. The tango is the, is the music of Buenos Aires, but if you are going to the conservatorio, it's not possible to, to, learn, tango, uh, to learn bandoneon. Now is this a little bit more relaxed, the situation, but it's still, if you are a tango musician, probably you don't know nothing about choirs. And if you are a choir conductor, you can, of course, because Piazzolla is well known in all the world. But to play Piazzolla, to, to perform Piazzolla in a good way, you have to, you have to play at least two years. Because it's, sometimes I am a pianist uh, classical, I can play Piazzolla because it's, it's not difficult for a pianist. But to do in a, with, with a good accent, because the music is... Is I am talking English, but you immediately understand I am not. I am. This is not my my mother language. So the, the the music is the same. You can you can play accent, legato, staccato, staccato in a way, but there are a, a kind of pronunciation that you have to study a lot. Even if you are Argentine, because the influence of the of the classical music is very strong. And when you start to play the tango, like this is my story, I start to play. The when when my when I finished my education in music in classical music, so when I when I went with Rolfo Medeiros to play the tango, I don't know nothing about tango really. I, I learned with him and playing with my with my orchestra. So to put together this this uh, two two disciplines, two 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 worlds, two universes, you have to study both. And not, every, not everybody is, is uh, able to, to, to spend the time to study bet, bet, uh, go in a good way both universes. I, I, uh, for, fortunately, when I was young or younger, uh, I understand this. I don't know why, but I understand this is not possible to have this, this division in the middle between this. We have, and, and Piazzolla, Piazzolla shows the way because he is. Is bringing bridges. He built, he built bridges between these, and I think we have to follow him. And I am a choir, choir conductor. Put the choir inside this, not outside. Inside, and you can. We can do. Of course, it's not easy because you are combining the combination is combinations of of colors that are absolutely in opposite way. But if you study a lot, if you experiment, it's possible to do something new. And I think this is the challenge. And all the time I am talking about this to the, to the young people, and no, I don't know if everybody understands this. Well, I think we understand. It, we, I think we understand it because you, you if you know no, no, nothing about tango, uh, but you know a little bit of classic music in the in the West, in in Europe, you yeah. listen to your music and you hear the melody, you hear that you hear the the rhythm. Um, yes, and, and you get really excited about it. Without you know, there are, I don't think there's any prejudice against tango uh, no. because we just love to hear the melody and the rhythms of the two combined. And I, 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 yeah. I think it also creates a bridge. It it helps bridge the gap between, like you say, the popular music and the classical music. What you've done is to is to produce something that if you are a popular musician you can understand more about choirs and if you're a choir musician you understand more about popular music and that is i think the genius if you don't mind me saying of yes. your composing and your pieces i think because i like a lot to study to investigate uh, to, no, investigate, no, uh, to um, what was the name of this experiment uh, to experiment uh, and, and and learn learn 
the, the, I, I, when I start with a tango, I go inside the tango with all my energy. Eh? And I spent a lot of time going one time uh, uh, by week to, the, to take classes with, with Rodolfo Medero and then with Orlando Tripo, the fantastic pianist and composer. So I try to, 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 to be inside the, the, the question, not just, look, just hear a little bit and copy. Uh, and experiment to go to play in, in the, around Buenos Aires with the tango, even in, in, a, in a big uh, concert hall or in a, a small uh, church in the middle of nowhere. So the, 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 this experience, I think, I, I think is important to, 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 to compose music that seems that is alive, that, that music that is, is, is produced in this age, but at, at the same moment is connected with, 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 uh, with, with, with the popular music and, and it's not something floating in the air, it's with the, with the legs in, in, the, in the air, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah, we are just so grateful to you for for what you've given to us yeah. as a choir. Uh, yeah. The Lacrimosa is absolutely fantastic. We are so excited to be the first people in the world, the first choir in the world to perform it. And we think that once we get it out there, there will be more people who sing it. And okay. uh, I just want to thank you for your time today and for everything that you've given us. And as, as I said, as soon as it's ready to mix, we will let you know and we'll invite you to come along and have a listen. Um, okay. But in the meantime, unless there's anything you want to add, Mark? No, in the meantime, Martin, thank you so much for talking to Ben and I today. And I know that you're in Lausanne. Uh, I wish you a happy time there and I hope that your concerts go well. So, so love thank you, Mark. You. Thank you, Ben and Mark. Uh, thank you all for all the feedback that you tell, told me. Uh, for me, it's very important to hear the, the result of, of the work and, and the opinion of, of, the, of the choristers and musicians. Thank you very much. Thanks.